on over 30 works of art with titles such as Famished, Message from the Sea, Engrossed, Story from April. It's left to you just to mention a few. The title of my work is Strength in Distress. It actually explains um, the people behind the scene. Like um, those people that work tirelessly behind the scene that we actually don't notice them. They are working tirelessly and uh, they are kind of the people that are invisible in our society. That's actually a painter. So there are, you know sometimes there are buildings like you, we see buildings, they, there are people who paint the work, who work tirelessly overnight. We really don't see them, we don't notice them, but they are working behind the scene to, to attain such uh, great results. So sometimes people only recognize the owner of the houses. If you look closely to the work, um, there's sweat draining down of the skin. So that actually signifies the strength. And also the hat is actually uh, wearing, it's actually, uh, it's more like a shelter from the sun to keep him working continuously like that. This is titled Inclusion, um, The Solution and Famished. The works have um, a very, very unique way of artistic expression. The, the reason why it's titled The Reverse Effect is because of the meaning of each work is in its reverse effect. It has a reverse meaning and we're having these works express emotion, deep emotions of um, anger, hunger, thirst and fear. Uh, these, these emotions are emotions that are not really appreciate on a daily basis. The people express these emotions. It is part of our um, human nature to have these emotions and you know people don't really appreciate these emotions when they see them but they are emotions and I believe that these emotions are supposed to be expressed and appreciated. The artists talk about what inspired them to do this. I've been drawing since I was the age of what 11 right from my primary five and that was when I started drawing so I'm always fascinated by what my surroundings, environment, people I come across and what body languages. These drawings were inspired by photographs and a little bit of mixture of artistic expression. So um, yes, I, I personally take my portraits myself so that I can get the right and exact emotions myself so that um, I, I won't have a difficulty in expressing the artistic um, meaning of the work. I'm also inspired by my models in the work. I have um, three models consisting of very dark skin. They have a very dark skin and those dark skin, I, re I decided to use dark skin models because um, there's this there's this strong expression that it, the menalin in the skin of um, black people actually gives. And, and actually, it tends to give the meaning of my work a deeper expression. So I, I feel like, yes, um, using dark skin will actually be able to portray my message to the people. They're not oblivious of what's happening in their environment. So they talk about the issues they are passionate about the only way they know how. I'm a girl that I've always been fascinated about tradition, now values and culture. I love to, you know, I love my tradition so much. And I love everything that has to do with natives so much. Because I'm a fan of traditional values and culture. So through my arts and through my voice as an artist, I want to still what, keep that value within us. I want people to still appreciate where they come from that tradition, our value, culture, norms and everything that has to do with what our native self. The exhibition titled Insanity is the first in the series that's according to the organizers as they have a mission to keep the art scene vibrant and alive. It's away from the norm, from the usual oil on canvas, from the usual marketplace, from the usual uh, landscape. You know, if you look at it, this is hyper-realism. This is putting talents into, into real test and I must tell you I'm impressed with what I'm seeing and I'm sure you're impressed too. So that's why we call it insanity. 
it's away from the norm. The message is very simple. We need to continuously do our best to preserve our heritage, cultural and art heritage, and the private sector needs to come out to support this and promote the young uh, talents that we have in our society. And after getting a taste of what's more to come, the audience will surely be looking forward to the next series. Such brilliance. Sometimes I wonder what goes on in their heads, how they create such wonders. It amazes me all the time. And there's so much more where that came from, but this artist has decided to go solo. Details of that in a moment. Join us again. While at the university, he moved from the phonetic department to the extramural studies department. There he became interested in traditional Yoruba culture and art. Though a teacher at Ibadan, he ventured beyond it, living in ancient cities, to learn more about the Yoruba communities. In 1957, he founded the magazine Black Orpheus, a name inspired by a French intellectual, Jean-Paul Sartre. The first African literary journal in England, it quickly became a rendezvous for publishing contemporary Nigerian authors. Mm -hmm. 